Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Thursday uh, video update. And uh, we're going to switch things around today and just start with our interview. So I've got uh, Donald and Elspeth waiting. I'll just bring them in and say hello. Well, hello, guys. How are you doing? Nice to see you both. Hey there, Steve. You okay? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you guys? You are, are you all right? Yeah, well, good to see you. It uh, looks as though you never leave that room. No, it's uh, I'm either up here or I'm uh, entertaining Zach somewhere downstairs. So it's, <laughs> this is my life at the moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a comfortable chair, so we're all right. <laughs> um, and so we thought this week would be good to you know, we, we maybe see the leaders, but we might not um, maybe hear personally about how things are actually going for them and, and, and their families as well. So we thought it would be a good idea to, to just stop in with one of the five of us to see how things are. So that's what we're doing. So um, do you want to maybe share a little bit about what life is, uh, is looking like for you guys at the moment? Okay, um, there's, well, there's four of us, four humans and, and the dog in the house just now. So um, right when things started to lock down, we got Shona home from uni quickly and got her room cleared out really quickly. And just about the same time, uh, Hannah went back to Spain. So Hannah, who's living with us for a while, um, is back in Spain. So there's myself, Donald, Shona and Heather um, all here. Uh, Donald and I both working from home so he's got little office in here i'm in hannah's old room so it's a bit feels like we're living life in these rooms um heather's now finished school um kind of an abrupt stop to the whole thing but she picked up a job at morrison's and she does the 6 a.m shifts there and shona has finished third year of uni she had quite a bit of work at first and is now uh, just kind of doing bits and pieces with uh, a little jewellery business that she's doing mm -hmm. online um, and that's our, our daily routine neither of us have really stopped working at all it's just continued both working from home yeah I've stopped travelling that's about the only change yeah. uh, continued working um, a little bit harder um, just because it's, it's everything's online and it's uh, I'm just finding it uh, a lot harder uh, emotionally uh, and, and uh, mentally um, than, than when you're uh, traveling and engaging with people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I have you home most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's 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 great. So yeah, I know you you mentioned that your wall to wall meetings is a on on Zoom is is a difficulty. Are there are there anything else that that you find hard and anything that you've actually found really good about um, these last few months in, uh, it, under these restrictions that we're under? Well, I think it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's obviously a lot of good uh, in, in, in terms of um, proximity to family, etc. cetera. Um, there's a lot of things that I've, I've found difficult to adjust to, um, just uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the the the, the uh, to put variety into in, into into my life, which you know before was was, was very varied, uh, meeting lots of different people, all the rest of it. But you know, regular exercise, um, uh, just uh, just doing doing different things and uh, and just making time for things. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's I can't I can't and shouldn't complain uh, when when you see and hear of uh, some of the other situations that. Uh, that people are, are going through or have gone through or um, are finding extremely difficult just now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got to really sort of uh, challenge myself every time I do think uh, negatively about this. Mm. Yeah, I think we've both, um, we really enjoyed having time with, with both the girls being there and getting out long dog walks and um, it, just discovering new walks around the area has been a real joy for me down we live near the river getting straight out there and doing a lot of walking around about carlisle um but we found i think both found the last couple of weeks hard because it just feels like the same thing same routine although it's different work it's you know it's the same place you're sitting and zoom calls you're on them like morning noon night so um 
And I've, I've um, work wise been really busy because um, a lot of our, well, I work for Langham Partnership and a lot of our donors want to know about what's happening around the world. And I found it tough reading some of the things that we get, get coming across in emails. Um, and it makes you think, oh, you know, we really don't have a lot to complain about. Um, we heard a couple of hard things that we've heard this week, and one of which was um, in Kenya, they were saying how difficult um, lockdown is for people who have to live hand to mouth mm. and you know, no income. And also the sense of community is gone in Africa. And it, that kind of hit me. I think we've our sense of community is, is gone a bit too then. And they, they talked about a Kenyan woman who um, her children were so hungry that she put a pot of stones on to boil so that they would think there was food cooking and they fell asleep um, mm. being hungry but thinking there was food coming. So, um, nice. And then I think, you know, we, we get down, what have we got to complain about? But I've realised God's not the type of God that, when you go to him with what's a problem in your life, he doesn't say, well, I've seen someone worse than you. You know, he's as concerned for mm. our needs as he is for the needs of everyone around the world. And it shouldn't put us off going to him with what are our problems. Mm. So we both feel far from extended family, um, especially Donald's family and Lewis. Um, and my parents have had a couple of quite big health issues over the last few weeks that that um, it's tough. We managed to go up and see them socially distanced, but it's it's hard for you. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's right through this um, time. You know, one of my regular prayers is that uh, is that uh, you know, ask God to to give give me a, a perspective on mm-hmm. on on all of this. Um, you know, at, at all times, trying to sort of see it from from His perspective. Mm. I think that you know we, we can see it as negative and we can see it as bad or um, everything else. But I, I really do think that um, there, that, you know, these are also going to be days of opportunity as well. And uh, my prayer is, you know, what is he, what is he teaching me? I believe that he's going to teach every single one of us who who, who believes in him that there is a purpose to this, uh, and 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 we are to play our part in it. So whatever that is, whatever is teaching us individually, and it'll be different for every one of us, I think it's very important that we, we tune in and, and understand what that is. Um, because I think uh, as, a church, as a church as well, um, there is, uh, you know, th- th- there's going to be opportunities. I think uh, we've uh, transitioned from what we were doing to, to doing something else as, as, as we've enjoyed and, to, mm. and, and we've been grateful for uh, for the community um, that we we have and, and the teaching that we, we continue to, to get, but what's he what's he showing us in, in for our ministry going forward? Um, you know, it's it's intriguing, um, as as Kevin was sharing with us on, on, on Sunday. You know the, mm. the the chaos that might seem to everybody around, but to God uh, he brings order out of chaos. And uh, as as he was reminding us, his spirit is hovering over over that chaos. Mm. So. Exciting uh, to think what God may have for us uh, going forward, uh, Steve. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think I would I would agree with that. And, um, something I read today um, about the Langham work, a lot of the preaching seminars have all had to stop. But I read a thing from a guy in Ethiopia, and their national government has, for the first time ever, I think, opened their TV stations so that all their religions can have a month where you get an hour a day to preach. And the guys that they've trained in preaching seminars are now able to preach nationally on wow. national TV. And it's, you know, he said that opportunity would never have been there. So, um, it's, yeah, God's at work. Yeah, he is. Uh, I was talking to some of uh, those, those who are uh, in the video will know Stephen Alfred uh, quite well. Um, he runs a, a fantastic hospital uh, in, uh, in Tana, in India. And uh, we were in conversation with him uh, last week. Um, and you know, we asked him, you know, are, are people sort of uh, more open there? And he said, well, yes. Uh, the previous Sunday, they'd run an, an evangelistic, uh, special evangelistic uh, meeting. Uh, the church ran that and uh, had invited the community round about uh, the hospital, the streets round about their neighbours, um, the staff in the hospital, and 1,400 people tuned in. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Neighbours, uh, doctors who would not normally 
uh, talk about uh, the faith, ask for prayer, you know, such as the uh, the openness, and you know, I think that's kind of the sort of you know, should, should is, is that what we desire to see? Mm -hmm. Is that what we're praying for? And I think that that was a real challenge uh, challenge to me, and, and perhaps it should be a challenge to to us as a church with the opportunities that we have. Mm. Yeah. So you, I mean, you've mentioned the very like practical prayer need there in terms of uh, your extended families. And uh, are there are there are there other things that we can pray for for you guys at the moment? I think for us, for um, for Heather to know what's next, really, um, mm. schools kind of finish, um, and it's the decision as to what she does now and. Three months ago, that might have been very different, and the whole environment has changed. So, um, it's trying to figure out God's will for her life. Um, Shona's due to go back to Dundee middle of July. She gets a new flat up there, so um, she'll be moving back at some point. Um, so, just I guess prayers, thankfulness that we've had time together, and and pray for for them, for the girls as the the next steps in their life. I guess would be my mm -hmm. biggest. Request. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, great. Um, we'll definitely pray into those things. Thanks so much for uh, for sharing with us uh, this evening and taking some time out of the busyness to to share. And uh, I'm sure uh, lots of people will be happy to see you and hear about things. And yeah. some of those stories you've told as well are just so encouraging. So. Um, yeah, thanks for those two. But uh, thank you very much. Take care. And uh, well, yeah. I'll see you very soon, probably, Donald. I'm not sure when the <laughs> next year else is. <laughs> right, right. So, great. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Give, a, give her a lot of flame, Zach. We will do. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Well, it was great, wasn't it, to hear from the Mackays. The only other things really to, uh, to mention are that... Uh, this coming Sunday, Brian is going to be uh, speaking to us. He'll be speaking to us from from Genesis, from the Tower of, of Babel or Babel, depending on on the I guess on where you're from, how you say that. And um, so that's continuing this little series that we're doing that we've been that we were doing before lockdown that we're just finishing off on uh, on stories you think you know. So looking at, at maybe stories that you learned whenever you were children and. Um, if you grew up in in church or you've you've maybe heard about them distantly if you if you if you didn't and, and you might know what the story says but do you know what it means or why it's there or what purpose it serves how it applies to today so that's what um what we what we we're, we've been doing we'll finish that off uh, the week after um as well looking at Jacob and uh, his uh, his uh, limp his wrestle with and, and the angel and the limb. So that's the, the next couple of weeks. So um, I don't have the reading to hand. It's it's obviously in Genesis. Um, uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly the chapter, but if you, if you flick through, I'm sure you'll, you'll find it. Is it chapter 11, maybe? Genesis 11, I think, is uh, the Tower of Babel. So have a, have a read there uh, and um, and uh, I guess come come prepared to hear what Brian uh, has got to say. I'm sure it'll be exciting. The, the other thing is uh, about the Alpha course. She'll uh, hopefully have seen some videos kicking around uh, social media um, over the last week uh, advertising uh, an Alpha course, which is going to start on Wednesday, the 1st of July at 7.30. So there's a couple of things that you can do with regard to that. First, you can you can pray for it, and please do pray for it. And pray that people will sign up, the right people will sign up, and uh, the people God wants there will sign up uh, to do that. Uh, if you want to be involved in it, you can be. Just give us uh, an email and let us know if you want to help. Uh, I guess lead it uh, in that way. Let let us know. We'd love to have you uh, involved in that. Or um, the other thing that you can do is just sign up to be a part of it and uh, come along, especially if you, you're new to Christianity or you want to find out more. Uh, it's a great opportunity to do that. So that's uh, three things. And the fourth thing is obviously in, invite your friends who you think might be uh, the right.
right people for um, this course. So that's uh, the ALF course, that's Sunday morning. I think that's everything for um, this week. We'll see you all on Sunday. Bye, take care.